I think it's fair to say that many people today would say that the Bill of Rights is the most important portion of the U.S. Constitution. Do we get this from how the people who drafted state constitutions, how they viewed rights, uh, or did they view them differently? Well, I think it's really important to make that distinction between state constitutions and bills of rights as opposed to the United States Constitution, where a bill of rights was added on as an afterthought, if you will, and as a concession, a political concession uh, to achieve ratification. All of the state constitutions were very rights conscious. Now, there are a couple of ways to protect rights in a constitution. You can ground your entire governmental structure on your Bill of Rights. Now, five states did that. Uh, the Virginia Declaration of Rights, Pennsylvania, Maryland, North Carolina, and Massachusetts. Article one of the Constitution is the Bill of Rights. And that thinking seemed to be, you don't know how to structure your government until you know what it is you're trying to protect. So let's identify what those rights are. That's not the only way to protect rights. They also can be embedded in a constitution, but not added as an afterthought. So let's take a look at the Virginia Declaration of Rights. Fun place to start. Notice the date, June 12, 1776. Virginia has declared independence on that day. It didn't wait until July. So the Virginia Declaration of Rights is a classic in social contract kind of thinking. Look how it starts out. We're going to identify our rights before we know what our government ought to look like. All men are by nature equally free, independent. They have certain inherent rights. They don't come from anywhere, they're not given by government, they're inherent. They cannot be deprived or divested of those rights. And I love the phrasing, what in particular? The enjoyment of life and liberty with the means of acquiring and possessing property and pursuing and obtaining happiness and safety. A real commitment to the function of government to not simply stand away from people and let them be free, but rather to help them obtain and possess property, happiness, safety, liberty. Now, all power is vested in and consequently derived from the people. That starting foundation. Government is and ought to be instituted for the common benefit, protection, and security. Notice that the Virginia Declaration of Rights does not specify a particular form of government as being necessary to protect rights. Very much like the Declaration of Independence, perhaps not surprisingly given the authorship. But of all the various modes and forms of government, that is best which is capable of producing the greatest degree of happiness and safety. So like Aristotle, recognizing that there are good forms and any form can become corrupt and become a bad form, but our preoccupation is not with form of government as much as it is government instituted in a way to achieve the ends for which it was designed. And here are the ends for which it was designed. Look at the fifth provision. This is where Montesquieu would be very proud, that the legislative and executive powers of the state should be dis separate and distinct from the judicative. That's not a suggestion of how the government ought to look. That is a declaration of the rights of the people of Virginia. Moreover, elected representatives should be reduced to private station at regular intervals. Not a good idea for maintaining good government, but a right of the people. So as we explore this document, we see many of the rights that we have come to recognize as essential to a, a bill of rights, including the rights of the criminally accused, rights of free press, freedom of religion. But I also want to put 
particular emphasis on the 15th provision. There is no way John Locke or Thomas Hobbes would recognize this writing, but Plato, Aristotle, and Cicero certainly would, that no free government or the blessing of liberty can be preserved to any people but by a firm adherence to justice, moderation, temperance, frugality, and virtue, and frequent recurrence to fundamental principles. There is a very classically Republican duty that accompanies the right of self-government that is reflected in this Declaration of Rights. Now, as I've said, not all state constitutions started out their constitutions with a Bill of Rights. New York is a great example where the rights are embedded. And so you have to look at particular articles within the Constitution to, for, to find protection for free exercise of religion, right to a jury trial, right to a jury of one's peers, and so on. Many of them overlap with Virginia's, but they are found in a different location. Does that mean they viewed the rights differently? I doubt it, but certainly the approach that the Virginians took is, is an indication of how fundamental they believed it was to identify the purpose of government before examining what the appropriate limitations and powers on government should be. So Unit 1 certainly is packed with a lot of ideas in history. Uh, we do seem to be a fairly complex people right from the start, not homogeneous at all. Would you agree? Oh, absolutely. And one of the great things about Unit 1 is it provides a foundation for understanding the complexities of the forms of government that we have chosen for ourselves, as well as understanding that so many of the social issues and controversies that we are debating today are almost reruns of social controversies and political tensions that we have experienced run, right from the beginning. That's just the nature of who we are. The other thing that's so great about Unit 1 is it sets the stage for understanding the Constitutional Convention in a much more sophisticated way. The Constitutional Convention did not create the government for the United States. Today we have 50 vibrant, active states, all with their own state constitutions, all with their deep history, culture, geographic differences, operating in a fairly exquisite tension with a national government and the effort to find uniformity on at, some, at least some matters. That seems to me to be a great demonstration of what a complicated people we always have been, I suspect will continue to be. I would like to thank our guest, Sue Leeson, for giving us this enlightening and excellent discussion on Unit 1 of the We the People text. I hope you have found it useful. And I hope you will join us for our second program, which will focus on Unit 2, which discusses how the framers created the United States Constitution.